All right, what's happening? Yashua Rico from Street Scores, and we finally got to it. I know I still got to talk about the FL Bottle re-signing as well. That's on the way. But today, I'm going to combine the Jamison Crowder re-signing with also a big-time topic with the quarterback pro day schedule. We're going to do a deep dive into that the second half of the video. But the most important part is this Jamison Crowder part because we got to talk about him. Is there a chance that he's more than just special teams? Is he also being re-signed to contribute as a receiver for our next quarterback that we're going to take number two overall? We're going to do a full dive into Jamison Crowder, look at some of his stats from last year, pro football focus grade all of that and then speaking of quarterback number two overall we're going to take a look at the pro day schedule for the top quarterbacks and things like that and we're going to do a deep dive and try to look at it from every angle who goes first who goes second who goes third with Jaden Daniels before to go first because of his supposed lack of arm strength in comparison to the other two top prospects all of that type of stuff we're going to dive into all of that but before we do make sure you stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and a being a video just like this one make sure you stay tuned because i'm working on so much content so many ideas i think it's almost safe to assume that maybe things have calmed down a little bit and maybe i can go ahead and knock out a cap space update video so maybe i'll do that later on today right now it's 5 54 a.m this will probably come out by like 7 a.m so maybe sometime like later in the evening maybe by then i'll go ahead and have a cap space update video for y'all i'm working on a mock draft now that we have different picks after the sam Howell trade so stay tuned for all of that and more let's go ahead and get to this video now let's get it adam adam All right, so let's talk about our boy, wide receiver Jamison Crowder, who has now survived three regimes, man. Three, man. I'm so happy for him. Jay Gruden, Ron Rivera, and now the Adam Peters regime as well. So Jacina Anderson was the first place that I saw it. She tweeted, new wide receiver Jamison Crowder is resigning with the commanders on a one-year deal. So Adam Peters right now is not giving you anything more than three years. And I'm happy that Jamison Crowder at least got two up out of it. But Jamison Crowder's just getting a one year. That's probably because of age. You can see by, if you look at who got one year deals and who got two and threes, I believe all of the oldest people got one years. And then like the guys that are a little bit younger got the two. And then like the youngest guys maybe got three. Except for anybody that's like a depth camp body type of signing. But Adam Peters is not playing about being in a situation where he has to pay a guy that's past his prime and not producing and is not worthy of the contract that they're giving him most importantly the cap hit that they're causing he doesn't even want to end up in that type of situation so if you're a certain age one years that's it maybe we could talk after this season see if you're worthy of bringing back for another one year but adam peters isn't playing with that and i do appreciate that even though i feel like Jamison crowder maybe he's good enough to contribute we're going to talk about casimir allen soon maybe they're hoping that Jamison crowder maybe handles it this year and then casimir allen is ready to take over 2025 and beyond as i start in return we'll get there though shouts out to mark bullock because i completely agree with this hands up if you had Jamison crowder as the second player this regime re-signed from his own group of free agents always a soft spot for crowder nice rotational option in the slot as well and i completely agree after because at first, I was like, maybe they're just serious about literally not re-signing anybody, like, at all. But then when they re-signed Jeremy Reeves, I was like, okay, okay, okay. So they don't hate everybody from the 2023 Commanders that's an unrestricted free agent going into this 2024 offseason. So they clearly, yo, it just depends on who you are if you matter. And so far, it seems like the only guys that are getting re-signed are special teams players. But, you know, that's a whole other discussion that we can get into in another video. But once Jeremy Reeves got signed, my main point is that that let me know that, okay, maybe there's hope for Jamison Crowder. That was immediately who I thought of. Like, as soon as I saw Jeremy Reeves get signed, I was like, okay, there goes our all-pro special teams ace on special teams coverage. Now, how about the returning side of it? Like, Jeremy Reeves is like the special teams equivalent of defense. We need somebody on the special teams equivalent of offense. And Jamison Crowder would be that guy. We already re-signed Casimir Allen 
very early on before we even cut charles leno logan thomas and nick gates they brought back mason brooks to compete for like the interior offensive lineman backup role hopefully i'm rooting for him to make the 53 man roster and they brought back casimir allen that same day that was literally the first move that adam peters ever made with this roster since becoming our general manager re-signing mason brooks and casimir allen but we don't really typically like consider those re-signings officially because they're like practice squad players it doesn't even really feel like it counts as a re-signing but either way my point is they already re-signed Kazma Allen now they just brought back Jamison Crowder so they clearly have some sort of an idea of what they're trying to figure out for the returning job especially specifically punt returning job for this team and I like the competition between those two I feel like you have the ceiling in Casimir Allen, the potential, the untapped potential that you could develop into a really good returner. But then you also have James, Jamison Crowder, who's the floor. We know at the very least he's going to be solid. I don't know what that was towards the end of the season, especially that Jets game. I believe it was the Jets game where he was just absolutely terrible. I don't, but hey, shouts out to him because he helped us get that number two overall pick. Just think right now, if Jamison Crowder didn't sell that game, I believe it was against the Jets with that weird fumble where it was like perfect near the sideline. He the, he looked like he threw um did the throw him up bust him up y'all know when y'all go you know every man for himself with the football back in elementary school it looked like he really like just did the throw him up bust him up type of thing it was crazy it was like please somebody take this ball from the Jets team and again just think if James Crowder did not do that and we end up winning that game we don't have the second overall pick and we're not debating between Jaden Daniels or Drake May we're probably at the point where we're debating should we go ahead and take JJ McCarthy? Maybe we should keep Sam Howell and not trade him away. You know, we're having those type of debates. We're in that weird situation. So, hey, thank you, Jamison Crowder, for that sale. Apparently, Adam Peters really appreciated you helping him secure the second overall pick. And he made sure he resigned you for that at the very least. Even if he doesn't want you as a returner or a receiver, Adam Peters was like, hey, man, good looks, Jamison Crowder. I see what you did there. Appreciate that double agent. Good work, sir. But back to my main point. Casimir Allen is the ceiling. He's the potential. But Jamison Crowder is the floor, the guy that's dependable and solid. Again, which started that whole tangent outside of really that Jets game. You know what you're going to get out of him. You're going to get a solid returner that's not going to mess things too much. And he's not going to necessarily potentially run one back all the way to the crib, per se. But he, he at least he's going to be steady and decent. He's basically just like a better Dax Milne. Um, maybe back when he was younger, maybe there was some hope that he could probably take something to the crib. But now it's more so he's going to make the right decision as far as should I catch this at like the 12 yard line or should I let it hit the ground and hope that it goes for a touchback so we can start at the 20 yard line instead of just it bouncing. And then now it's at the three yard line. Now you look stupid. Now you're getting chewed out by the head coach and things like that. It's a lot of nuance to the returner position. It's not just simply catch ball and run. There's a lot of decision making that goes into that. And Jamison Crowder provides that floor there to where we don't have to worry about that at the very least. If Casimir Allen ends up becoming better than Jamison Crowder, great. But until then, if that ever happens, happens at the very least we have Jamison Crowder on this one-year deal to where we know we can at least get some good at worst decent returning from Jamison Crowder at least something not as bad as what Dax Milne was and plus I also trust our new special teams coordinator who's coming over from the Seahawks to make everybody better in our special teams unit I'm just super excited about that alone I know special teams isn't the most exciting part about football, but it definitely matters. I'll tell you that if we want to win the field position battle, it definitely matters. Most drives start with special teams for a reason, man. Unless it's a turnover, drive start with special teams is a very important part of the game. That's the difference between you starting at the five yard line within the five yard line or at the 25 or even better on any given offensive drive and that's big time man that really adds up in the game that's the difference between you scoring points and not scoring points i don't know the exact percentages and numbers but i'm pretty sure you're far more likely percentage wise to score a touchdown starting from the 30 yard line than you are within your own five i'm pretty sure but moving on returning wise jamison crowder last year had 35 attempts with 278 yards all punts and his longest return was a 61 yarder 
So shouts out to him for that, man. He still got a little something left in the tank. It's not like the 85-yarder that he had for us back in 2016. That was his longest back then. But this is the, that was the second longest run in a season that he's had since 2016. So shouts out to Jameson Crowder for still showing that he got it at least a little bit. He ain't lost all of it. Of course, he's still not 100% him from when he was really young. But, hey, man, he was doing his thing. So even outside of special teams, though, he played in 139 offensive snaps. He had 20 targets, 16 receptions for 159 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown. And he ended up with a 70.5 overall grade and a 70.8 receiving grade. But he didn't play enough snaps to like, I don't think he even played enough to get like a real pro football focus ranking. Like if you go to the wide receiver rankings from last season, I don't think he played enough to get like a true ranking there. But hey, man, 16 receptions on 20 targets that's pretty good again they gave him a 70.5 overall grade that's not bad at all and i'll take that man if he can contribute as like a depth receiver that would be really nice like maybe like a receiver four or five i mean because at the very least we know he's not a liability on the field because he's he, of course you don't want him being the quarterback's first or second read any given play so, of course, you know, him being re-signed as our starting punt returner, that's first and foremost. And anything we get from him as a receiver is extra, like super extra. But still, man, I would love for him to potentially, I, mean, I think him being our wide receiver four or five is not a bad job. I think we're going to bring in a lot of draft receivers, maybe even some depth signings as veterans, maybe before, maybe even after the draft, some draft the free agents. But if Jamison Crowder ends up on our depth chart as like wide receiver five, while also being our starting punt returner until Casimir Allen is ready to take over that job, I think that's pretty good, man. But at the same time, like I mentioned earlier, this organization clearly values Kazma Allen as a high priority practice squad player and they're certainly going to give him every chance to compete with Jamison Crowder for that starting punt return spot and now I specify punt returner punt return spot because I'm still not sure who our starting kick returner is. And I think that is pretty noteworthy. Remember Antonio Gibson, who just went to the Patriots, was like our main kick returner. And it was like some sort of like a rotation of different guys, depending on the week is what it felt like. Maybe I could be wrong, but it felt like it was like Antonio Gibson was the only consistent guy back there for kick returns for us. And now he's gone. And Jamison Crowder, I don't believe, took a single kick return snap last year. I don't believe. So that's a wide open competition there. Like punt return is basically between Kazma Allen, Jamison Crowder, and maybe like a draft pick or a draft a free agent. But right now, kick returner, I don't have anything for y'all yet. So I'll let y'all know when I find out. When I even have a clue, when I hear a rumor or a report, I will definitely let you know what's going on with kick return. I'm just bringing that up just to let you know that, you know, we have an idea of what we're doing at a lot of different position groups right now. But kick returner, I honestly don't know. But punt returner, I feel like we're in good hands because you have some floor with Jamison Crowder which you need but you also have some ceiling in Kazma Allen which you want and I hope he reaches that ceiling he has the potential to be a be better version of Jamison Crowder just when you're looking at his highlights but at the same time as of today Jamison Crowder is definitely the better returner you don't want to send the young and inexperienced Kazma Allen out there it's a game where the score is like 24-24 and now he's muffing a punt or again like my example earlier instead of catching at the 12 yard line he tries to let it bounce and hopes it goes to the end zone and now it lands at the three yard line and then now next thing you know we go three and out we punt it short and now the other team is in field goal range as soon as they take over the drive and they end up kicking a game winner to win the game it could be something that small of a detail that leads to you losing the game so that's why i'm happy that we have jamison crowder he's the necessity Kazma allen is the potential that we're rooting for to end up getting better and developing and just to even take a few more steps back this means that so far including the re-signings and outside free agent signings that we've done and Kazma allen who's technically like a practice squad player from 2023 we have made six special teams signings this offseason because don't forget all pro special teams ace Jeremy Reeves, pro bowl long snapper Tyler Ott, consistent kicker Brandon McManus, and Lions special teams ace Anthony Pittman. Those are all signings that have been made, including Jamison Crowder and Kazma Allen. That makes six notable special teams players so far. 
And that probably wraps up all of the notable guys. Like the rest of the special teams unit will probably consist of like depth guys from different position groups, linebacker, offensive line, defensive line, like the agile guys that can go down the field and make a tackle on kickoff coverage and things like that. It's just random. It's just going to be some depth guys that all they do is play special teams. We don't expect them to contribute on defense or offense. So you may not even necessarily know their names that well. But the only notable additions I can see potentially happening to the special teams are maybe some draft picks especially like a returner type guy to contribute as a returner immediately so like maybe like a receiver or a running back that's a returner now and then they're being developed as a wide receiver or running back offensively later on down the line or maybe even like an undrafted free agent just like how Casimir Allen was last year you never know but the kick returner competition is wide open right now and the punt returner is between Jazz Jamison Crowder and Casimir Allen right now, but you never know if they may add a third or a fourth person to that competition once we get to training camp and all of that type of stuff. We'll see. But now moving on, let's talk about these pro days, man. I'm excited. So we have USC March 20th. We have Michigan March 22nd, LSU March 27th, North Carolina March 28th, and Washington also March 28th. And shouts out to the Big 12 for doing all of their pro days for all of their different colleges and teams all in one big day, man. That sounds like so much fun. Even though there aren't any real notable quarterbacks coming from that, I can't wait to tune in because that's really interesting. Like they, since they're doing all of the colleges in one day, it's like the day before technically is when everybody's going to be measured and things like that. And then they're actually going to do like the real workouts that we watch the next day. And I'm really excited about that, man. I don't think like my SEC with my Georgia Bulldogs in it could ever do that because it's just too many schools that you really need to make sure you focus on and things like that. Everybody deserves the individual day. I also don't see the Big Ten potentially doing that like with Michigan and Penn State and Ohio State and things like that. But I think it's really cool for the Big 12. I, I just I, I'm actually really excited about tuning into that. I would don't think I would have ever really tuned in to any of those colleges individual days, but them all doing it in one day. I'm really interested in seeing what how that goes i'm very curious and also that's a lot of great talent being put in display in general in all of these pro days even outside of the quarterback so even if we weren't the commanders fans and we weren't obviously taking quarterback number two overall i would still highly suggest watching a lot of these pro days man i really would because it's a lot of great talent it helps me like get a better understanding of what I want to do with my mock drafts, like the videos I put out, or even just mock drafts. I do a lot of mock drafts just to myself on my phone, just having fun that I don't even necessarily do like a video on and things like that. And these, these pro days do show a lot, but quarterbacks wise, that's Caleb Williams one day, then JJ McCarthy two days after that, then Jaden Daniels five days after that and then drake may and michael Penix jr both in the same day the next day immediately after Jaden daniels so this should be really fun man we're about to have like a little eight day run nine day run of just pure chaos and fun man i'm super excited about that and just to let you know i'm pretty sure most people missed it and didn't even know what happened but as you notice i didn't say too notable quarterbacks names in there and that's Bo Nix and Spencer Rattler because they already had their pro days for some reason somebody scheduled their pro days during the height of free agency chaos like right in the middle of it like literally in the climax of free agency we're signing Jeremy Chin Bobby Wagner and all of these guys meanwhile Bo Nix is doing his pro day and nobody's basically watching unless you're Oregon fans or maybe a guy that wants Bo Nix or maybe you're like the Cowboys and you had nothing going on because your team wasn't signing anybody I guess you figured, hey, eh, might as well turn on the Oregon Pro Day. I don't have anything better else to do. Who knows? But I'm still confused as to who made that decision. We have all of these other free days with nothing going on. Why would you schedule a Pro Day when, first of all, NFL teams themselves, I mean, what us fans think doesn't really matter, to be completely honest. But, like, NFL front offices and coaches, they're sitting here scrambling around, phone call after phone call, negotiating with agents, trying to sign the guys that they won and then maybe another team counter offer so now you got to come back with an even better offer they're busy focused on that they don't have time to be at Oregon or South Carolina's pro day to watch Spencer Rattler and Bo Nix somebody did those guys dirty I'm not gonna lie maybe if they were being showcased
based on a day where nothing is going on say like just tomorrow like march 18th well technically later today is 6 a.m eastern time but either way say it was just going on on a monday that would have been better than during the free agency period where everybody was severely distracted by free agency i just really don't understand but either way as commanders fans doesn't matter to us we're not taking both nicks and spencer rattler at all so it really doesn't matter but just still from their point of view somebody did them dirty man i would have been like hey if i'm bo nix i'm just doing my own personal pro day just by myself bringing a camera crew whoever wants to come can come but we're gonna have to run that back because i'm pretty sure nobody saw it i definitely would have watched it if it wasn't during the free agency period i just like pro days but i didn't even get a chance to see it because we had so much going on but also moving on honestly the only days that really matter to us as commanders fans should only be caleb williams march 20th you have Jaden Daniels March 27th and then Drake May March 28th those should be the only quarterbacks that we care about but who knows some would also say JJ McCarthy on March 22nd and I'm gonna tune in just to watch but nah I think we should only be worried about again March 20th the 27th and the 28th in that order of Caleb Williams Jaden Daniels and Drake May but either way I think with the way that this is set up if I'm Jaden Daniels with supposedly the weakest arm out of the top three quarterback prospects, I would have preferred to go first if I could have. Like, because imagine Caleb Williams putting on a Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Malik Willis type of performance. And then here comes Jaden Daniels immediately after that. And then Drake May after him. So Jaden Daniels is going to be in the middle of two ridiculous arm talent bookends. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make him look a little crazy. But mind you, Jaden Daniels did have the best deep ball in all of college last year. And I'm pretty sure these guys trust the tape more than anything else. So even if Jaden Daniels doesn't come out doing any crossbody, one-legged, 70 yard deep bombs no look type of things there his pro day like i believe caleb williams or drake may even attempt to do um i still feel like that shouldn't hurt him too much because he had literally the best deep ball in all of college college football last year easily i don't even feel like it was really a close second especially when you're looking at advanced statistics if you're looking at pro football focus grades any measurement possible Jaden daniels was easily the best deep ball passer last year the most accurate and all of that so yeah maybe he can't throw a off of two toes blindfolded in torrential rain a 70 yard bomb like maybe he can't do that and maybe drake man caleb williams can but i mean come on dog is it really that serious because also when you think about it when we're thinking about the most memorable pro days of recent history, most of those guys have not ended up being good quarterbacks. Like the guys I just named, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, and Malik Willis. Like all of these quarterbacks throwing these crazy passes that they should never attempt in a real game. It was already naturally overrated just that by itself excluding the quarterbacks that have done it recently but then now after recent history of all of the quarterbacks that have been making those big flashy throws and them not turning out to be good quarterbacks at nfl level now it's even more overrated than it naturally was even before then even if you just went back 18 years people doing these flashy throws in their pro days does not mean that they're going to go out there and be the best quarterback just because you literally have the best arm that makes you a great thrower that doesn't necessarily make you a great quarterback there's a huge difference and a lot of people get that confused but even though i like Jaden daniels more he's my quarterback too I do feel like between the three quarterbacks that he will have the least like ooh and ah pro day type of thing out of all of the top three guys. I could easily see a scenario where like maybe Jaden Daniels is the most accurate. He's the most on point. He looks the most prepared. But then Drake May and Caleb Williams go out there and make some ridiculous, again, stunt double level throws, some things that look like it was photoshopped or edited with special graphics. And then everybody's just only going to care about that. That's what's going to end up going viral. I mean, I... You never know. I mean, the one thing that Jaden Daniels could do to go viral is use his legs, maybe take off running, maybe run a 40 time, maybe like literally run, like have like a little track meet with some of the fast players on LSU, like Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas, maybe literally run with them, like against them, compete. And then that would go extremely viral, especially if he not only, I mean, keeps up with them, but he beats them in a race. You just never know. I don't think he's that fast, but, you know, I feel like that would be his only chance of going viral and compete. Comparison to Kayla Williams who goes before him and Drake may after him but honestly a Jaden Daniels pro day honestly like to be completely honest I think the thing that most people are concerned about and the most interested in is his weight 
even more than any throw that he could ever make in his life at the pro day. I think more so people are tuning in to get what's his official weight measurements. Is he at least 200? Is he 210? Or is he only 190? Is he 180 something? That I'm pretty sure that's what people care about the most. And I know people, especially quarterbacks, don't normally run 40 times at their combine, but I would love for Caleb Williams or Drake May to do it at theirs and put up times that probably end up surprising people. And that could also send the internet into a frenzy. Because right now, it seems seems to be shifting from Drake May going second overall to Jaden. I mean, that just seems to be the general consensus amongst the natural national media and things like that. And even the betting odds are saying so for the first time in over a year. It's been Drake May for over a year betting odds. It suddenly changed to Jaden Daniels literally like this past week. So I would love for Drake May to run like a 40 time that a lot of people don't expect, like a 4-5 something, which I think he actually could run. I still don't know why people think Drake May is just super slow, but... Of course, he's not as fast as like a Jaden Daniels or as quick as Caleb Williams. But some people talk about Drake May in the light of like a Peyton Manning or something like that. And so I would love for him to run like a four or five something at his pro day, send the Internet into a complete frenzy and start up the Drake May to the Bears at number one overall type of chaos. I would love that. I've already seen a few draft analysts say that Drake May is literally their QB one and that the Bears should already take him. But it could actually get some real fire behind it if he runs like a serious 40 time. One that surprises people. Wouldn't necessarily surprise me that much because, I, I, again, Jaden Daniels' mobility is severely underrated. The way people talk about him, it's actually pretty crazy. And with Kayla Williams and Jaden Daniels as my quarterback one and two, I would love nothing more than for the Bears to pull a 2017 draft Bears and repeat history. Let me break it down because I've talked about this in the previous video before, but there's some strong parallels here because going into that draft, the 2017 draft, you had Deshaun Watson, who was the most proven quarterback, with supposedly the higher floor, the bigger college wins, the more clutch moments. Literally, Jaden Daniels. And arguably the most mobile out of the group as well, Jaden Daniels. And then you also had the most naturally talented quarterback in the draft, still very raw, and also lost a bunch of games in college. Pat Mahomes and most people think of Caleb Williams as literally the next Pat Mahomes and then the Bears decided to ignore all of those traits the floor and the ceiling and then went with a UNC quarterback instead at Mitch Trubisky which is where Drake May went to school as well even though I like Drake May way more coming out of college than Mitch Trubisky you never know because maybe that alone the fact that Drake May is a better college prospect entering the NFL than Mitch Trubisky was if they were willing to take Mitch Trubisky over Pat Pat Mahomes, I mean, of course, they didn't know. Barely anybody knew Pat Mahomes was going to become the Pat Mahomes that he is now. But I think most importantly, taking Mitch Trubisky over Deshaun Watson was like, what are they doing? And I feel like, honestly, taking Drake May over Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels right now would be even less of a shock than what it was with Mr. Trubisky. So maybe they do repeat history. And as a Commanders fan, I'm going to let you know now. I highly doubt this happens. But if for some crazy reason the Bears do take Drake May number one overall and Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels are both sitting there at number two overall, I may shed a tear in my live stream. Because y'all know I live stream every round of the draft at least minimum rounds one through five like that's just what i do that's just how i'm always gonna stream and and, and i just love the draft man y'all don't understand how much i love the draft honestly the off season is like one of my favorite parts of the entire year i mean like i said i do mock drafts on my own just chilling i could just be working on a video i'm like you know let me do some mock drafts while i'm editing or i'm watching like anime or something i'm just doing a mock draft on my phone real quick if i'm out the house i'm at the store i'm walking around grocery shopping doing mock drafts so i just love mock drafts i'm always gonna live stream the draft especially as a commanders fan because i mean so far we've always been feeling great in the off season then we get to that regular season and things get ugly i think this year things will be different but still man the off season has been very consistently fun for us dreaming and hoping and that's just who i am man i'm in the he i'm heavily into recruiting watching high school tape for my co my georgia bulldogs and then watching college tape for my commanders i love that whole process watching people go from high school to nfl that's just my thing that's my main thing so of course i'm always gonna live stream the draft because even for players that i don't even think the commanders have a chance of getting a lot of those guys i've watched them as high school recruits and i just want to see their whole process and uh, like try to picture oh i can't wait to see like what if the the chiefs get a hold of this guy 
like what that could look like so i just i'm always gonna live stream the draft it's not even just a commander's thing i just love the draft process and it's actually really crazy too because i'm slipping i still haven't watched every single second of my georgia pro day yet but i do know my boy gunna stockton didn't look too great he's clearly uncomfortable with throwing an nfl ball he's not there yet with an nfl ball yet i believe he'll get there eventually but that pro day it was ugly um, but I still got to go back and watch the entire pro day every second of it. I'm not a real UGA fan if I haven't, so I got to go back and do that. But make sure you mark your calendars, set your alarms, and if I'm free, I may actually live stream during those top three quarterbacks pro days. Like, why not? I'm going to be watching it anyway. Why not watch it with y'all? Of course, I won't necessarily be able to show it on the screen because YouTube copyright laws and things like that i'll get my whole channel shut down but why not at least just live stream you have the pro day up and then have me like on a device somewhere you have both of us up at the same time let's do it man i'm definitely thinking about doing it so stay tuned for that but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video please stiff arm that like button stiff arm that subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one i really appreciate y'all man make sure you stay tuned again i'm working on mock drafts i'm working on a cap space update and like a breakdown of everybody's cap hits that we've signed so far who's the biggest cap hit who's the least cap hit all of that type of stuff what's the deals looking like or do we have any void years and things like that how creative did we get with these contracts all of that type of stuff so stay tuned for that a whole lot more video ideas that i have and we're about to slowly start working on some draft content so i'm gonna start doing film sessions for a lot of the draft prospects that we're targeting all of that type of stuff and also of course be on the lookout because i still haven't done the fao about a re-signing video as well so that's going to be on the way i'm probably going to pair that with another video topic as well so it's not just fa obata by himself just like i didn't want to do jamison crowder by himself today love jamison crowder but i felt like it just made too much sense to go ahead and throw in another topic with it go ahead and consolidate those two topics together but yeah man make sure y'all stay tuned of course let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video how do you feel about jamison crowder competing with kaz Allen for punt returner who are your leading candidates for kick returner right now because honestly i don't really have too many and of course make sure you leave a like on the way out i really appreciate it man i really really appreciate all y'all everybody donating to the cash app i see y'all donating to the super chats i make sure i try to reply to those as well and i'm trying to read and reply to every comment possible but of course i'm busy but at the very least the ones with the super chat it's not even like i'm trying to treat anybody special it's just like come on they donated money to say a comment it's like i gotta respond to those that's the least i could do so i'm trying to also read and reply to everybody's comments even outside of the super chat so i really appreciate y'all being patient with me i'm gonna catch y'all later man i'm out oh.